I was referred to a video by a YouTuber called The Academic Agent, in which he asked for my help in solving a mystery. So I thought this would make an interesting object lesson in how facts get distorted on the vlogosphere and how to fact check. Let me start by saying that I like Academic Agent, and not just because he uses the wonderful George Sanders as his icon. He does repeat a lot of the nonsense about climate change found on the internet, but he has shown a willingness in the past to listen when evidence contradicts his assumptions, so I'm sure he'll do the same here. I have a question to ask you. The question is about whether the Maldives are going to be inundated by rising sea levels. Scientists have been giving grave warnings about the Maldives for many years. In 1988, they predicted that it may be submerged in 30 years' time. Academic agent says scientists predicted, but this isn't a scientific paper. It's a newspaper report. The article doesn't quote a scientist, it quotes a government bureaucrat. So if we're going to look at what scientists predicted, then we need to look at what scientists predicted. Remarkably, in 2018, after this prediction had not come to pass... Just a reminder, this wasn't a prediction by scientists. Scientists again predicted that the Maldives could become uninhabitable in 30 years. But again, this is a newspaper report. So again, we have to check to find out what scientists predicted. Because believe it or not, tabloid newspapers don't always accurately report the contents of scientific studies. The mail doesn't even cite its source, but it does give a keyword and a date. So it's not hard to search Google Scholar for the word Roy Namur and find the relevant paper. And it's quickly apparent that it doesn't say the Maldives will become uninhabitable by 2030 at all. First of all, it was looking at the Marshall Islands, not the Maldives. The study looks at two different issues. The first is the issue of potable drinking water. As sea levels rise, salt water is intruding into the fresh groundwater, making it increasingly salty. The paper predicts that between 2030 and 2065, the groundwater in many atolls will be too salty to drink. The range of dates reflects three different scenarios, depending on how much action is taken to curb CO2 emissions. 2030 is the least likely date because it envisages no action at all on climate change. The mail gave the correct range predicted by the study, more or less, but typical of a tabloid newspaper, the mail chose to put the least likely date in the headline because it's the most dramatic. And that's the date the academic agent picked up on. Scientists again predicted that the Maldives could become uninhabitable in 30 years. In fact, the study says a lack of potable water could be overcome by desalination or transport of fresh water from elsewhere. But a bigger problem will be storm surges which flood the islands with salt water. As sea levels rise, these will become annual events between 2055 and 2105. The conclusion is that many atolls will remain suitable for human habitation until 2100 or 2150. This isn't just in the body of the study, it's right there in the title. But the mail took this issue of uninhabitability, or human inhabitants as it calls it, and applied it to the earliest date for salty drinking water. The study didn't look at the question of permanent inundation by rising sea levels, but it said that other studies had predicted this wouldn't happen until at least the end of this century. The academic agent, however, not only said that the islands would be uninhabitable by 2030, he went on to claim they'd be completely submerged by 2030, something even the Mail Online didn't suggest. Given that the Maldives may be under the sea by the year 2030... This is typical of the way information passes around the internet in a kind of virtual telephone game. A study says water supplies on the island will become too salty to drink sometime between 2030 and 2065. Then suffer increasingly frequent storm surges between 2060 to 2105. Then become uninhabitable and eventually submerged by rising sea levels after 2100. The Daily Mail picks up bits of this to report that the Maldive Islands will be uninhabitable by 2030 to 2060, and a headline that says this is likely to happen in 2030. 
and the academic agent picks up bits of the mail story to report that the Maldives will be underwater by 2030. To cap it all, the only mention of the Maldives in the study was among a list of islands for which the study's findings are relevant. Now, there are some confusing aspects to this. For starters, in 2015, in The New Scientist, some experts walked back the claim and said that the atolls may actually grow in the coming years. Two years later, in the same publication, they went back to the original claim that the Maldives was under grave threat. In 2018, Fizz.org repeated the claim that climate change may actually help to grow the atolls. But no one's walked back any claims. There's nothing contradictory about studies that show increasing salination and storm surges alongside studies that show increasing atoll size, because they're all happening, and they've all been reported and predicted in scientific journals for decades. In fact, I covered this in my video, Climate Change, Hurricanes, Atolls and Coral Reefs. Dead coral, either broken off by wave action or marine organisms, builds up to form an island, and it's still building these islands today. This isn't exactly news. The process was first postulated by Charles Darwin, and a number of papers have been published over the decades documenting the continuing growth of these islands. Although research continues, there's as yet little evidence that the expected rate of sea level rise will reverse that. In 2010, Arthur Webb and Paul Kench analysed hundreds of historical aerial photographs and confirmed that 23 out of 27 Pacific atolls are indeed either stable or growing in size, including Tuvalu. So why do climate scientists insist that these islands face problems? Well, the problems are related to other issues caused by climate change, such as storm surges, coastal erosion and saline intrusion, not total submergence from rising seas. But of course, the stability of the islands depends on the continuing health of the coral reefs. And as coral reefs continue to die because of rising water temperature, the protection and growth they afford will diminish. In fact, this is explained in the very articles academic agent cites and the studies on which they're based. It's just a question of reading beyond the headlines. So now that we understand the premise is wrong, the rest is pretty easy to straighten out. This narrative is so well worn that it has even made it onto the GCSE science syllabus. For non-British viewers, that's a core curriculum exam taken by all 16-year-olds in this country. And quite right too, because that's what schools teach, science. We may not live to see the year 2060, but children of today will. They'll be the scientists, economists and administrators of the future who'll have to deal with salination and annual storm surges and the dislocation of island populations. So what could possibly be wrong with teaching this in school? Not in an alarmist or emotional way, but as sound, practical academic study. Foreign direct investment in the Maldives has more than quadrupled since the year 2000. This is very strange behaviour from people betting with their own money. Don't they know that their money will be under the sea before long? But of course anyone who checks this claim, including the smart investor, knows that that's nonsense. Before long is actually decades away, and that's more than enough time to see the fruits of an investment. After all, all assets will depreciate over time, with or without sea level rise. So to reap the rewards of an investment, you either need enough time to see profitability outstrip depreciation, or you need to know that when you sell the investment years from now, even with the era of undrinkable water and annual inundation getting closer, you'll be able to offload it onto the second type of investor, people who don't bother to fact check and who believe that this wild and implausible claim that the Maldives may be under the sea by the year 2030 is actually a scientific prediction. So 20 years from now they'll be very happy to invest in the Maldives despite scientific predictions about salty drinking water on the grounds that predictions about the Maldives going underwater by 2030 turned out not to be true. 
Most of them won't even bother watching this video, showing that no such prediction was made. I might as well own up to the confounded thing. I bungled it, didn't I? Well, yes. But the real Maldives mystery is why so many self-professed sceptics who watched the video didn't bother to spend just a few minutes fact-checking to find out whether any of this was true.